This video is brought to you by Incogni. Since coming to power in 2011, the SNP have appeared an unstoppable force in Scottish politics. They consistently won large majorities in the Scottish Parliament and actually won almost every seat available in Westminster elections in 2015, 2017 and 2019. Last year though, everything began to unravel. A damaging financial probe damaged their credibility. Factional infighting lost them their unity. They lost the election winning Nicola Sturgeon and polls now suggest that Labour have actually overtaken the SNP in Scotland for the first time in years. In some ways, the SNP's recent woes in Holyrood mirror those of the Conservatives in Westminster. They've both been in power for too long, they've both lost election-winning leaders, and their woes have been exacerbated by internal ideological disagreements. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the problems the SNP are facing, and ask whether they can recover before this year's election. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Now, the first and most obvious problem still facing the SNP is the ongoing Operation Branch form, the name the police has given to the investigation into possible fundraising fraud committed by the SNP. The investigation began in 2021 and has seen senior members of the SNP arrested, including Nicola Sturgeon, her husband Peter Morell, a former SNP chief executive, and Colin Beattie, an MSP. As part of the investigation, the police looked into allegations that £666,953 that was specifically raised by the SNP to campaign for a second Scottish independence investigation was used for other purposes. More specifically than this though, they also looked at a loan of £107,620 that Peter Morell provided to his wife Nicola Sturgeon. Now, for some of you watching this, this might seem like old news, and that it's already had its impact on the party. After all, this was all revealed last year, so how could this still be affecting the party? Well, the investigation is still ongoing, and every now and then, updates make their way into the newspapers. For example, only last week, The Sun Scotland reported that the police are now investigating the use of false signatures in SNP finances. This drip feeding of further updates helps to contribute to the loss of confidence in the SNP. Had the investigation concluded, the SNP could begin to recover from this scandal. But as it hasn't, they're still being damaged by it. This is in much the same way as the Conservative Party, when the seemingly never-ending Partygate scandal continued. They couldn't properly move on from this while the police and parliament were still investigating. Another big thing hurting their polling right now is party unity, or the lack thereof. In British politics, most political parties do not consist of one ideological faction. They're usually deliberately broad, so as to attract as many voters as they can. The downside with this is that factions within the party can often jostle for positions of power, undermining party unity. This generally isn't too bad when there's a leader that can win elections and guarantee the party power. Think back to when Boris Johnson won the 2019 election. Party unity was high, and it seemed as though Johnson could be one of the next big leaders. As the polls began to decline following a huge array of scandals, factionalism began to set in. This is what has happened with the SNP. They lost their unifying figure, Nicola Sturgeon, and with her, their chances of re-election. While Hamza Youssef did win the leadership election, he did so only narrowly, winning 52.1% to his opponent Kate Forbes' 47.9%. Forbes represents a totally different faction of the SNP, one that's more socially conservative. She's a devout Christian, something that has influenced her views on social policy. She's been on the record as saying that she'd vote against equal marriage, she opposes premarital sex, and has said that she would not seek to challenge the decision by the Westminster government to block the Scottish Gender Recognition Reform Bill. Given the large amount of support for her back in the leadership election last year, it's clear that she knows that she could be a potential successor to Yousaf. There's been some reports already this year that she's starting to use her position to undermine Yousaf with her recently criticising the Butte House Agreement, which saw the SNP work more closely with the Greens in the Scottish Parliament. She's also opposing SNP tax rises, and criticised NHS policy. Blair McDougall, a policy advisor who worked on the Better Together campaign in the independence referendum, and is soon to be a Scottish Labour candidate, claimed that this demonstrates that while Forbes has been on manoeuvres since she lost the leadership election, she was now using live ammunition. The point is that Yusuf has a powerful enemy within his party, 
an enemy that will almost certainly capitalise on any defeats that the SNP may suffer this year. So, factionalism and the police investigation into the SNP have clearly had an effect on polling. And this decline in polling risks pushing the SNP into a self-reinforcing doom loop, where bad polling exacerbates infighting, which makes polling worse, ad infinitum. Before any of this, back in early 2020, things for the SNP couldn't have been better. Their polling for Westminster elections was actually above 50%, with their next closest competitor, the Conservatives, on about 25%. At the same time, in the polls for the Scottish Parliament, the SNP were at just under 40%, with the Tories behind them on 25%. Their support in both these polls held until the end of 2022, when the polling began to tank. The polling continued to fall following the resignation of Nicola Sturgeon and the arrest of Peter Morell, and this decline has only continued since then. With a UK general election expected this year, the worrying thing for the SNP is the fact that, for the first time, Labour have overtaken them in terms of polling, with the latest polls putting Labour on 36% and the SNP on about 33%. Similarly, the mega MRP poll published in The Telegraph a couple of weeks ago suggests that the SNP are on track to lose nearly half of their seats at the next general election. In total, they predict the SNP will retain only 25 of the 48 seats that they won in 2019. So, it's clear that the SNP have been struggling for the past few years, whether that's because of their ongoing police investigation into their finances, or because they've lost their popular leader. This has been reflected in the polls, and unfortunately for them, this is likely to make things even worse. Bad polling and election results tend to make factional infighting even worse. In fact, we've seen that with the Tories this year. And this, combined with the ongoing finance investigation, means that 2024 probably isn't going to be the SNP's year. Now, while you've been learning about the SNP's decline in this video, you might not realise that shady forces are working in the background to collect personal data from various sites and bundle it together ready to sell it to a third party. Now, these data brokers can sell this bundle of information about you to anyone from a company to an online criminal. Now, while you might assume that you're safe online, perhaps you change your password regularly, or perhaps you're a hawk and always uncheck that little box that signs you up to annoying newsletters. Unfortunately, this doesn't completely save you. Companies that hold your data can still fall victim to a data breach, meaning that these data brokers can still compile information about you to sell on to others. Now, this is where our sponsor Incogni comes in. They reach out to these data brokers on your behalf, request that your data is removed, and deal with any problems that might arrive. In fact, they're tenacious, and will put in multiple data removal requests even after your data's been removed to make sure that it doesn't go back on the market. So, create an account with our link in the description, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf, and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, by using our link, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks for Incogni for sponsoring this video.